Greeting Summon Academy. Hope you're all doing well today. So I wanted to take this moment here and we're going to talk about finding elapsed time. Um, especially during this day and age, it's always a little tricky to understand like, oh my golly, time feels like it's kind of blending in together. <laughs> and for most days it does feel that way. But I just wanted to look at a skill where we look at looking at times and figuring out how long we take uh, with certain things. And actually, it's interesting to see the first one can really relate to us right now because we have to find time to get some work done from our packet work, Google Classroom, anything like that. So this is actually a pretty good skill to know um, and to work on more if we're not 100% familiar with it. So we're going to look at a couple of examples here and we're just going to talk about them, okay? So here we go. So um, in the first problem, it says Luke finished his homework at 7.35. If he started working on it at 4 o'clock, how long did it take for him to finish? Okay, so we know a couple items here, okay? We know his homework was finished at 7.35. And we know he started at 4 o'clock. Now, we can actually take this one of two ways, okay? Let's look at the first way here. It's the count off method, or counting off, or counting up, if you will. So we started at 4 o'clock, and we're going to end at 7.35. So we need to determine how much time that actually has been. Well, I can just kind of start going up, go boom, five o'clock, four to five, five to six, and then six to seven, okay? And then from seven, I go from to 7.35, okay? So first and foremost, we got to think, how many hours just went by? Well, we had one hour, two hours, three hours, and then, so we had three hours. Sorry about that. <laughs> so three hours. Oh, that's not really that good. Yee. <laughs> so we had about three hours. And then we got to think about, okay, well, we're already at the 7 o'clock time, but I went from 7. Actually, we do that in different color. It kind of helps us out a little bit. So I went from 7 to now 7.35. Okay. So how many minutes just went up? Well, 35 minutes. So... He started at 4, he finished at 7.35, and doing the count up method, we started at 4 o'clock. That was our start. This was our end. Okay. And then we went, we started first by just kind of going up by the hour mark first. So from 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, and then we stopped at 7 because... 7.35 was our final time frame. So then we then went from hour mark looking to looking at the minute mark. So from 7 to 7.35, well, 35 minutes just went by. So that's how I got 3 hours and 35 minutes. So that is one method that you can use when figuring out these elapsed time problems. We will talk about another way. that you can solve these problems. 
if you can already believe it, folks, we are actually in the month of May now. Um, we have only just a matter of some weeks left before the last day of school, which is May 29th. Just an FYI there. Um, packet work. Um, you can always drop off your packet work if you are unavailable to make it on those Monday times. You can always pick up packets at another available any other time. Uh, we have bins outside the school if you want to drop off your work there. So then that way, you know, you're able to train your work and everything's okay. All right, sorry. So I rambled on there for a second, but we're going to look at number two next up, okay? Um, so number two is talking about Will woke up from a nap at 3.40. He originally went to sleep at 2.30. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, fun times, right? Just kidding, sorry. But how long was his nap, right? Okay, so we knew he woke up from his nap, right? So he woke up 3.40. He went to sleep at 2.30. <laughs> How long was that nap? So, in this sense, doing the count-up method may not be 100% ideal because it's such a shorter time frame. In the other example, we had quite a distance of time that we could have played around with a little bit better doing the count-up method, so... We're actually going to look at this as a glorified subtraction problem, okay? Now, when I do this, notice I have the times 340 and 230. Now, if we just got rid of the colons there, okay, for the time frame, this would look like 340, and that would be 230, okay? And we know that when we subtract numbers, the biggest number is always at the top when we subtract. So I'm going to take that 340 minus 230. And then we're going to go from there. So then I just start from the right, work to the left. 0 minus 0 is 0. 4 minus 3 is 1. 3 minus 2 you know, is also 1 as well. Okay, so now we got to kind of think about how we can break that apart, right? Because we knew originally that we had, we can put our little colons back here, right? <laughs> so it doesn't mean that he somehow magically it was 1, 110 <laughs> in the afternoon and he decided to, you know, have his nap. No, this just means we can break it down. Again, this is the hour these are the minutes. So he went asleep for a total of one hour and 10 minutes. So that is a second way that we can break down these problems. So the first was doing the count up method because we had a little longer extension of time to work with. This one we did glorified subtraction because the time frame was a little bit shorter. And as always, if you find yourself liking one method more than the other, I mean, may you may do so. But again, making sure we're still practicing the skill and then we ask ourselves, does it make sense in the end? Like if I were to solve this by doing the count method and then you got like three hours for some odd reason, you're thinking that's not right. Something went wrong. <laughs> So before I go, I want to do one more with you. I know I said only do two, but this will actually end up um, being something that we need to know how to do a little more, especially if we have to do what is called refiguring out some time here. Now, what is that going to look like? So, kind of like so here. Okay. 
sorry, just kind of looking around, making sure. Okay. All right, then. Okay. Yes, let's look at number 10. Okay. So in number 10, Lana started watching TV at 525. If she stopped watching at 9 o'clock, how long did she spend watching TV? Hmm. Now, again, we could always do the count up method. I mean, that can always be a thing, but I just kind of want to show you if I was to do this subtraction problem wise. So let's do this. So, right, I have the 9 o'clock, I have the 525. If I omit the colons, that's 900 and 525, right? So, Remember, in subtraction, the 900 would go at the top. Since there's not as much space at the bottom there, we're just going to kind of go up here at the top. So bear with me here. My apologies. 900 minus 525. All right. So... I can't really do much. I can't do 0 minus 5. I look next door. I can't do 0 minus 2. So I got to do some good old-fashioned borrowing, right? So this 9 becomes an 8. This 0 becomes a 10. But since I had to borrow again, that 10 becomes a 9. And then that 0 is a 10. And we are done because there's nothing else left that needs to be borrowed. So 10 minus 5 is... 5. I have 9 minus 2, which is 7. And then I have 8 minus 5, which is 3. So in the end, <laughs> put my dot there. So I would have 3 hours and then 75 minutes, which, um, you know, is okay in a sense. But if I'm already mentioning hours, hours and minutes if i just if i just said minute wise like oh this project's gonna take me about 75 minutes to do You're like oh okay whatever but if i'm supposed to mention hours and minutes for my lapse time like we've been doing in the other two examples we're gonna have to do this as well and more specifically we need to look at this 75 minutes now you think to yourself mr wisniewski what in the world Job to get converting. Yes, you gotta convert. <laughs> In one hour is sixty minutes, right? So in one hour we get sixty minutes. Here we're at seventy-five. We need to convert this. We need to bump this up. So we need to take out 60 minutes from our 75 and then bump up that three to a four but we need to know how many minutes are left over here because we can't just leave it like that so when we did that we just basically have to say well 75 minus 60 5 minus 0 is 5 7 minus 6 is 1 we have now four hours and 15 minutes, <laughs> okay? So again, we could have done this counting up, okay? We could have counted this up just a little bit more. Um, we could have gotten the same answer in the end, four hours, 15 minutes. However, um, it is a little bit more tricky when we have the subtraction method because even though we're doing everything right we end up with an answer of three hours 75 minutes which again we can't say we can't say hours to minutes like we've been doing and then having our minute marker be past 59 minutes. I can't even say 60. If I had 60, if this even said 60 at the end, I would have to have convert that to four and that would just um, went to zero in the end. So it would have been four hours total. 
So six year higher, I have to convert that into an hour mark. And if I have any remaining minutes left, like how we had here, I got to know. I have to figure that out. So you'll basically end up taking the number that's over 60, subtracting it from 60, you get your remaining minutes, but then bumping up your hour mark like we did there for the four, or to get from three to four. Okay, so that is my lesson today for finding elapsed time. I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, it's supposed to be actually a really nice weekend uh, in the 70s with rain coming, I think, later on Sunday night. So take advantage of the nice warm weather if you can. Um, hang in there, Summit family. I know you got this rooting for you. We hope you're all doing well. Thank you. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.